Welcome to the fourth episode in a Legendarium series about the life and reign of Edward Longshanks. In part four, The Siege of Kenilworth Castle, we will talk about the Battle of Evesham and how Lord Edward pacified England in the years following the Second Baron's War. The misgovernment of King Henry III led English barons to rally under the rebel Simon de Montfort, who came to rule the kingdom in all but name. Yet de Montfort's poor leadership led the barons to seek a new monarch in Henry's heir, Lord Edward Longshanks, then 25 years old. At Kenilworth, Lord Edward scattered the army of de Montfort's younger son, also named Simon. On August 3, 1265, de Montfort moved south to Evesham. The next day, his army stopped for breakfast near Evesham Abbey by the River Avon. Overhead, the skies grew dark with clouds heavy with rain. A terrible storm brewed. Yet the rebels saw sunlight when they heard of an army carrying de Montfort banners marching their way. Soon enough, they learned that the army of Lord Edward marched towards them, carrying rebel banners taken at Kenilworth. Before the battle, Lord Edward ordered his men to pin red crosses to their chests. Lord Edward's ally, Roger Mortimer, blocked the bridges on the River Avon, trapping the rebel Montfort within a river's loop. Outnumbered three to one, de Montfort put the captive Henry III in the front of his army to demoralize the rebels. It did not work. As the storm began, Lord Edward's men attacked. Both sides fought in cold, soaking rain. Royal soldiers dragged young rebel knights from their horses and stabbed them to death. Lord Edward's men tore King Henry III from his horse, and the monarch only saved his life by shouting his name. All the while, a 12-man hit squad hunted for de Montfort. In the end, they found him and thrust a lance deep into the Earl's neck, killing him before he struck the ground. Lord Edward took cruel vengeance, cutting off de Montfort's head, slicing off his testicles, and hanging them on either side of his nose. In disguise, Lord Edward then sent Montfort's head as a trophy to his ally, Roger Mortimer. Lord Edward also cut off de Montfort's hands and feet, sending them as a warning to the castles of other rebel barons. Only de Montfort's trunk would be buried at Evesham Abbey. Within weeks, a cult grew up around de Montfort's grave. Men reported miracles at both the Earl's burial site and the battlefield where he died, making some believe that Simon de Montfort was a saint. King Henry III, fearing more rebellion, moved Montfort into a secret crypt. Though not yet king, Lord Edward Longshanks was at the front and center of English politics. Despite being a sickly child, he now stood six feet two inches tall, and many days spent in tournaments left him barrel-chested and powerful. Revered as a fierce soldier, his frequent flip-flopping during the Second Baron's War also left him with a reputation as a shifty and slippery politician. One writer noted he is a lion by his pride and ferocity, by his inconstancy and changeableness he is a pard, not holding steadily his word or promise and excusing himself with fair words. Medieval writers believed that pards, or half-leopards, could change their appearance at will and kill prey with a single leap, which says something of Lord Edward's reputation. Indeed, when King Henry III declared all rebels to be landless and disinherited, Lord Edward happily took his share of the spoils. Edward's allies received confiscated houses and valuable prisoners, while dispossessed rebels fled into the forest, much like scenes from a Robin Hood ballad. Lord Edward took charge of operations against these rebellious refugees known as the disinherited. Yet he came to understand that persuasion worked better than punishment. 
In December 1265, he convinced a group of rebels camped in the Lincolnshire marshlands to surrender without bloodshed, and later ended a rebellion in the Cinque Ports by offering pardons and liberty in exchange for peace. Yet he proved willing to fight against intractable rebels. In one celebrated battle, Lord Edward Longshanks fought a rebel knight named Adam Gurdon in single combat while his men watched from behind a ditch. After beating Gurdon into submission, Lord Edward hanged Gurdon's followers and gave the defeated knight to his mother, Queen Eleanor. Finally, Lord Edward laid siege to the rebel castle at Kenilworth. This mighty fortress, one of the largest in the kingdom, stood at the heart of England. It had been a royal castle, and King John, Henry's father, spent vast sums strengthening its defenses, adding a giant man-made lake around it. In 1253, King Henry III gifted it to Montfort, back when they were allies hoping to secure the future rebels' loyalty. Now it had a garrison of 1,000 rebels. Determined to retake the castle, King Henry and Lord Edward gathered a huge arsenal, including 2,000 wooden screens to protect royal soldiers from arrows, 60,000 crossbow bolts, and nine siege engines. Lord Edward and his younger brother Edmund brought in an army of engineers, miners, and tradesmen. Royal stone-throwing machines built around the castle bombarded it with a continuous stream of missiles. They were matched by the weaponry inside, so one chronicler described the stone projectiles from the two sides as clashing in the air. As the expensive siege wore on, King Henry III called a parliament near the castle in October, which hammered out peace terms known as the Dictum of Kenilworth. This allowed the rebels to regain their forfeited lands upon payment of heavy fines. However, the garrison rejected these terms, and the siege wore on for another six weeks. In the end, starvation brought about what the siege failed to do. On December 13, 1266, the remnants of the garrison agreed to the terms they had been offered in October. The rebels left Kenilworth with their arms, horses, and harnesses. Only two days' worth of food remained in the castle. Yet the siege's end did little to restore peace, and victory left King Henry III so broke that he pawned the jewels from the shrine of his revered Edward the Confessor. Yet the Kenilworth siege gave Lord Edward an education in castles and siege warfare, which he would use often during his reign. Furthermore, the 172 days of siege convinced both Lord Edward and his father Henry III that England and the royal treasury needed peace. Turning to his old ally Gloucester, Lord Edward set up a distress fund for former rebels to help them raise the funds needed to pay their fines and thus be restored to their old properties and have no more incentive to rebel. By September 1267, Lord Edward also agreed to give up his personal power beyond the Welsh marches in exchange for peace with the powerful Welsh Prince Llewellyn Ap Gruffydd. Finally, Lord Edward approved the Statute of Marlborough, a collection of laws which carried out court reform within the Kingdom of England. Lord Edward Longshanks was now 28 years old, an accomplished war captain, and lived in a kingdom at peace once more. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.